Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the Telegram channel. And to lead into that, I want you to listen just briefly to this 15 seconds. <laughs> Who is that? That's Mr. Kitao. He is the CEO of SBI Holdings, the largest outside shareholder of the company Ripple, and an absolute crypto bull. And what he's talking about is the slide there, where it shows a 33% stake Ripple has taken in the company MoneyTap. MoneyTap is a separate entity under the umbrella of SBI Holdings. And it provides a mobile app that runs on RippleNet, primarily designed for people who want to do a private label brand. More than 35 banks in Japan have actually made a capital investment into this company. Three are currently using the app under that white label design that provides private branding for the bank. Three additional banks will connect in February. And in his comment, where you can actually spot a little bit of a smile. He says, if it increases, and what he means is if the banks connect to this API, and if it increases, Gaibu Keizai Koka. What that means literally is outside world economic effect. And then Kudu is coming. If I told you what that is in English, it means that the network effect will come as more banks join. And then he goes on to say, you know, that's the internet business. Well, Ripple's been talking about the power of network effects with the role of XRP in the internet of value from the very beginning. Here you have a PDF from 2015, and you can see from a spark to a wildfire. Well, there is another kind of spark out there. Happens to be the XRP bully. He started this Telegram channel, and he did so, he says, to show his support for the utility of the XRP ledger. Just a single individual created a spark that has become a wildfire. And I believe he's sincere when he says that the reason for the February 1st pump and hold, and I'm going to emphasize hold because that's what he emphasizes in this video, is to call attention to that ledger and to attract developers. Have a listen to just 30 seconds. That the XRP ledger has real value. And real value does not come from pump and dumps. Real value comes from developers developing on the XRP ledger, making it more robust and versatile. That is where real value comes from. So the Telegram channel at the time I prepared this video has reached more than 140,000 members. Now listen, you'll never ever hear me say whether this is good or this is bad. I believe the market will do what the market wants to do. And people should be able to do with their money whatever they want to do. That's called freedom. However, when we look at some of the facts and keeping emotion out of it. There are some key findings by the Binance 69 page report that came out two days ago that tell us that 52% of cryptocurrency owners do not consider crypto as a hobby, but a source of income. With 15% saying that it is their primary source of income. So this digital asset XRP under these kinds of conditions right now has extreme risk. That is for sure. 55% own crypto for a long-term investment. And probably I would say that 
if you look at the individual community of XRP, it's probably even higher than that because look how many people have hung in there for so long. But it leaves a very large percentage that are in this for short term trading opportunities. And I think that the XRP community has waited so long for gains. That I do think there's going to be a large percent that will take profit. So just understand that fact. And therefore, one should expect a rise and fall. I mean, you can look at Dogecoin here, and it proves that expectation for you. Expect exchanges, not all, but likely some, are going to have some trouble with the surge of volume. And I imagine that there are some exchanges that suspended XRP trading in the U.S. that recognize now that, whoa, they made a big mistake because they're missing out on all these trading fees. But also expect many will not time this game of chicken correctly. And also expect it's going to have alarm bells sounding at the regulators. Also expect that this phenomenon will probably continue. It'll continue with more coins in the mix. And expect also that decentralized exchanges are going to have a shot in the arm. So at the end of the day, I want to say expect the unexpected. And just know that we're going to take a look at some of those behavioral analytics about 24, after, 24 hours after the 1st of February, where sentiment is going to join me and break down for us those metrics. I think it's going to be very interesting because these are unprecedented times and the, the spark that's coming from social the social media is just really, uh, I think, has everybody's attention. That is uh, something that we'll be able to really analyze uh, for this particular case. I'm going to have them on Wednesday morning. So in the United States, it's your Tuesday night. So look forward to that. I think it's going to be extremely interesting. I actually have a big week this week. The attorney, Jesse Hines, and I are trying to get together. We're trying to coordinate our schedules. And I have a little bit of a surprise. I let some of that surprise out when I told you that I'm working on a project with XRP Rose. But there are two other people who have also joined in this, what is going to be either really fun or it's going to be a huge flop. I don't know, but I guess I'm taking a bit of a risk and I'm also letting these gals know that I appreciate their, their joining me to give it a shot. This is Sarah Austin. She is from Kava Labs. And I think a lot of you in the XRP community are familiar with XRP Rose. She's going to participate and Le Leia Helprin. She is also going to join us. And I just don't want to tell you what it is yet because I prefer you to be pleasantly, hopefully, surprised. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, everybody, we're jumping to the fluff. Gosh, I just can't find the right spot for me today. I want to talk about haiku because haiku is a short form of poetry that originated in Japan. And it's important to have a seasonal reference in your poem that is just three phases. And the earliest known Westerner to have written haiku was a Dutchman, Hendrik Doef, and he was here in Japan trading in the early 1800s. I'm going to read you his poem, which I think is interesting. Lend me your arms, fast as thunderbolts, for a pillow on my journey. So I'm not exactly sure what he was trying to say there, but in Japan, 
when you talk about haiku and talk about Westerners, everybody brings up Dr. Dougal Lindsay. He's living here, making some phenomenal underwater discoveries for the Institute of Extra Cutting Edge Science and Technology, which is an agency that does research for marine earth science. And he is working as a senior researcher, but he also happens to be a haiku master. And a major news media, what is, which is called the Mainichi here today, published, mm, I think, over 300 poems, haiku poems that, have, that were selected by Dr. Lindsay. And they're so interesting because not only are the poems fun to read, but on each poem that is selected, the doctor made a comment. And so his comments are as enjoyable as the poems. Let me just read you one. Tracks of the wolf rewritten, winter deepens. And so that came from someone who lives in Ontario, Canada. And I'm telling you, the poems were sent in from every corner of the world. It's, it's so fun to read. And he said that although not concretely stated, we can easily imagine that the wolf's tracks are in the snow and that it has been rewalking the same path as it looks for prey. Yeah, so I am going to leave you with a poem that I wrote this evening. An ember in a winter chill, dry grasses burn bright. What I'm saying is XRP is the ember. The winter chill is February 1st. And the dry grasses that are burning brightly is the wildfire. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.